Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that speed up reactions. Each enzyme has its own unique shape. If you take a look at this enzyme right here, you will notice that this enzyme has a unique shape to it and it has this area right here known as the active site. What is the active site for? Well, this is the site where something known as a substrate will go ahead and bind there. It's like a puzzle. The substrate must have the same shape to be able to fit into that active site of that enzyme. Once the substrate and the enzyme bind and you have an enzyme substrate complex, then the enzyme can go ahead and start speeding up that reaction for you to get the products at the end. Let's take a look at an example. This is an enzyme known as lactase. You can see that it also has its own unique shaped active site. One thing to note about enzyme names is that most enzymes, the names uh, end in ACE. This enzyme lactase right there is going to bind to a specific substrate that has uh, the correct shape. And that substrate is lactose. Lactose is a sugar found in dairy. Once lactose binds to the lactase enzyme, the enzyme can go ahead and start speeding up the reaction. And in this case, what is the enzyme lactase going to do to that sugar? It's actually going to start breaking down lactose. So when you drink a glass of milk, uh, which has a bunch of lactose in it, your body containing the lactase enzyme, that lactase enzyme is going to go ahead and start breaking down the lactose for you. Individuals who are lactose intolerant, they lack the enzyme lactase, and so they have a pretty hard time breaking down lactose. Now, as long as the substrate is around, this reaction is going to keep going. Another thing to note about enzymes is that if you start your reaction, let's say with 10 enzymes, at the end of the reaction, you're still going to have those 10 enzymes. Enzymes are not used up during the reaction. Okay, here we're going to talk about how can we inhibit enzymes. Let's take a look at image A. You can see that there is an enzyme with its unique shaped axis of site and the substrate is fitting perfectly so there's nothing wrong with this uh, image up here and so the reaction is going to go ahead and proceed well if I want to go ahead and prohibit that enzyme from functioning properly and I want to stop the reaction uh, let's go ahead and take a look at image B to see how is that going to be possible Notice right here, there is uh, this inhibitor um, in red, and if you take a note of how it looks like, you will notice that it looks similar to the substrate. Notice how it's able to fit into the active site. Now the problem is, once it fits into the active site, that prohibits the original substrate from binding. And if the original substrate cannot bind to the enzyme, then this enzyme is not going to speed up the reaction. So this reaction is actually going to come to a stop. Now, this inhibitor right here in example uh, B, we refer to it as a competitive inhibitor. And the reason why we refer to it as a competitive inhibitor, because uh, it is competing with the substrate. It wants to get to the active site uh, before the original substrates get to it. I like to think of it as, um, let's say the active site, uh, it's a parking spot. 
and the original substrate is your car. So this is your regular parking spot, and so you usually park your car there, and then, uh, like, you know, a, a day comes where another car cuts you off real quick and cleans the spot. Now, if that new car cleans the spot, the problem is you cannot park your car there. And um, in this case, again, like, you know, if this happens with enzymes, the enzyme is not going to be able to function. Uh, and we refer to those inhibitors as competitive inhibitors. Let's take a look at C to take a look at another way of inhibiting an enzyme. So if you take a look down here, there is this inhibitor, but notice how this inhibitor is not going after the active site. It's actually going after another site within the enzyme and um, the name for that site, we refer to it as allosteric site. And allosteric just means another site. So you might ask, well, okay, what's the big deal if this inhibitor binds to that allosteric site? The thing is, once that inhibitor binds to the allosteric site, take a look at what happens to the active site. The active site changes shape. And so when the active site changes shape, uh, the substrate now cannot fit. And if the substrate cannot fit, then guess what? This reaction comes to a stop. Now, this type of inhibitor, we are not going to refer to it as a competitive inhibitor because it's not competing with the substrate. So we refer to it as a non-competitive inhibitor. What are some examples of inhibitors? Um, well, some painkillers that you would take when, let's say, you have a headache. Um, those painkillers like ibuprofen, they actually uh, inhibit the enzymes that are responsible for sending the pain signals to your brain. And so um, basically that reaction stops and you're not going to, you don't feel the pain. Another example are some cancer drugs. They are also inhibitors. They inhibit enzymes that help your cells divide. So by inhibiting those enzymes, that's actually a good thing uh, because that would stop the cancer cells from dividing. There are actually um, uh, toxins that are inhibitors and those toxins, they inhibit essential enzymes inside of your body from working and can cause uh, severe damage. So we're going to stop right here and I will see you guys next time.